In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to save money by diagnosing the three most common furnace problems and how to fix them. All right, so the number one most common problem is a dirty flame sensor. Now, I just have these flame sensors from older furnaces that I've worked on in the past, but they have different orientations, but they all physically work the same. All it is is this little rod goes in front of the flame here, and what this does is it senses a flame and basically tells the system to continue running for the burners to stay on. Now, what will happen eventually is you can see this discoloration here. Um, this will not sense the flame, and even though there is a flame coming on, this will not sense it and the flames will turn off. So I'm gonna show you exactly what it does if it has a dirty flame sensor, how it will act. That way, if you come to your furnace and you see it doing this, odds are it just has a dirty flame sensor. All right, so if we turn our thermostat to heat, the first thing that we're gonna see happen is our inducer is gonna come on. This is just pulling exhaust air out. And the next thing that we're gonna see is the hot surface igniter, which we're gonna talk about in just a second. That will turn on and start to glow red. And after that has been on for about 20 seconds, we will have ignition. Now I'm gonna show you what will happen if you have a dirty flame sensor. All right, so the unit kicked on and turned back off just a couple of seconds later. And this will basically cycle like this. So about 30 seconds have passed, the igniter has come back on and we'll notice this will happen once again. Flames are on and off. And this will just continue to cycle on and off, on and off, until eventually your furnace will actually lock out. So it's important that you do this before you clean the flame sensor or check anything. What you wanna do is disconnect the furnace. Right here we have this set up on a plug with an outlet. Um, I highly recommend you do this if you have a gas furnace. But if you have a switch right here, just flip that switch off flip it back on, maybe leave it off for about 30 seconds or so, and that will essentially reset the system so you can see what it's doing. If the furnace is coming on and off like this, it's very easy to clean the flame sensor, and I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Okay, so by your burner assembly, you will notice this little guy right here. Now this is the flame sensor installed. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna turn off the power to our furnace, and we're going to pull this connector off right here and then we're going to get this screw right here. Now, sometimes these are really hard to get to, so I'm gonna show you a couple of tools that make this a lot easier. This one comes straight out, so it's really easy to get to, but sometimes the screw is facing up and down and you just don't have any room to work with. All right, so our power is off. We're just going to pull this connector off. Now, you don't want to get this confused with the igniter. The igniter typically has two wires and this has 110 volts going to it uh, when it's lit. But this just has basically a signal wire. There's no voltage going to it. And it will typically just have a little connector cover with a spade connector like that. So what we're gonna be using to remove this uh, flame sensor is this guy. I have used this so many times and I absolutely love it. You can disconnect it from the handle and make it shorter. It has six different sizes, which makes it super versatile. Now, alternatively, if you can't get something this large into uh, the space to get that screw out, as you can see, this takes up a fraction of the space that a nut driver or something like this would take. And it has five sixteenths and quarter inch. This has saved me a handful of times and I'll make sure and leave this in the video description. Uh, you can also find both of these tools in our Amazon store. Simply go down to the video description, click my favorite HVAC tools, and you can find these guys there. So this is gonna be a quarter inch screw here. So we're simply going to remove that guy. This also has a magnetic tip, which is really nice to keep track of your screws. So we're just gonna wiggle that sensor out. Sometimes you have to bend it kind of weird to get the sensor out and it is as easy as that. Now you can see this one doesn't have a ton of buildup. A lot of times if yours is dirty, it'll have white buildup on here. And these are pretty delicate. So all we need to do is use like a dollar bill or something um, not super abrasive to clean this off. And that's literally all it takes. So I'm just gonna use a 20 here. We're basically just gonna work it back and forth. Doesn't take much at all. 
and that's it. So we're gonna put this back in, test it out, and we should be good to go. All right, so we got that put back in after cleaning it. We have the wire connector put back on, so we're gonna put it back into heat mode and just make sure that everything stays on. We're just gonna let this turn on and verify that the flames will continue to run. There we go. All right, let's move on to problem number two. All right, so problem number two is a bad igniter. Now I'm gonna show you what your furnace will do if it has a bad igniter. We're going to duplicate this by simply unplugging the igniter, acting as if the igniter was bad. We're going to put it in heating mode and I'm gonna show you exactly what it'll do if it has a bad igniter. All right, so our inducer just came on. Now what should normally happen next is the hot surface igniter will glow red, but we're acting as if the hot surface igniter is bad. We just heard the relay click to turn the hot surface igniter on. Next, we'll hear the gas valve open right there, sending fuel in, no ignition, and it turns back off. Okay, so we're going to turn the furnace off and we're going to remove the hot surface igniter. It's just gonna be one screw there. Now, if you have an older furnace, yours will be a little bit different. Now, you don't have to be super careful when you're taking this out if you know that your hot surface igniter is bad. But with the new one, um, the old style hot surface igniters, you wanna be real ginger with how you handle them because they can break really, really easy. And there we go. That is what a hot surface igniter looks like. Um, this is on a newer furnace, but I'm gonna show you what the older ones look like on an older furnace. And this is what glows red and ignites your gas. All right, so here's what the hot surface igniter looks like up close. Uh, this is what one will look like if you have an older furnace. It has some space between these uh, portions of the element there. However, I would not recommend replacing one of those with the same style. I recommend replacing them with one of these because these are a lot more um, durable and they're not as susceptible to breaking. Now I purchased this kit through Amazon. Um, as you can see, it has a bunch of different brackets. So really no matter what furnace you have, you can make one of these brackets work and you can bend that piece of metal, no problem. Basically, it just has two wires and you just use your two wire nuts there and that's all it is. All right, so if you wanna confirm that your igniter is indeed bad instead of just replacing components, assuming that it's bad, we're gonna check this with a voltmeter. As you can see, our inducer motor just came on and in just a second, we should get 120 volts. There we go. This has 120 volts going to the igniter if it was plugged in. And if yours is not glowing red, nothing is happening, then this is a good way to confirm that you do indeed have a bad igniter. So our gas valve just turned on. No flame was sensed, so everything turns off. So obviously with this one, it's very similar, but if yours had an older style igniter, like on an older furnace, you can totally replace it with this style. With all of these little brackets, you can um, find out what configuration works best. You can even bend um, this metal a little bit to get it to the right spot. And you just wanna make sure that this is slightly off of where the flame is going, so it's not impeding the actual flame. So just off uh, to the side, and that will ensure that your flame ignites when the gas goes anywhere near it. And now in this instance, we want to plug this into our furnace, but this just has two bare wires. So if this was actually bad, we would just snip it right here and we would use these ceramic wire nuts that it comes with that are heat resistant, tie them together. Uh, the polarity does not matter. And then we would just reattach it. So if you're a homeowner, I highly, highly recommend to just purchase one of these, keep it somewhere where you know it is. And that way when the igniter does decide to go bad, you're not gonna be stuck trying to find a factory replacement one. Um, these are pretty easy to replace if you're pretty handy. And these always go bad at the worst possible time. 
um, during the holidays or on the coldest day of the winter. So this is a really nice thing to have in your house for less than 30 bucks. I'll make sure and leave this in the video description as well. All right, so problem number three is a very, very simple one. You'll probably be surprised, but as an HVAC contractor, one of the top three is for sure finding a dirty air filter. Um, this often goes overlooked. Some homeowners don't even know or tenants don't even know where their air filter is. So make sure you locate that and you get it changed out on a regular basis. Um, these should be replaced every three months or even in some cases they need to be replaced more often than that. But a general rule of thumb is about every three months. Now a good way to check if your filter has a little bit more life left to it is if you hold it up to the light and you can still see quite a bit of light going through it, that's a good indicator that it's still good. This one, you can see our lights here. You can hardly see anything through that filter and it's absolutely time to replace that guy. Now, a couple of things to note with your air filter. Now, obviously this is a demo furnace, otherwise we'd have duct work here. Just make sure that your arrow for your new filter is pointed toward the furnace. Um, it always goes toward the furnace. It never should go the other way. Sometimes your air filters could be located at the furnace itself. Sometimes they can actually be inside the furnace of the bottom or top casing. And other times you could have wall or ceiling grills where you have to replace that uh, filter. Just make sure that the arrow points either toward the ceiling if it's a ceiling mount or toward the wall if it's a wall mount. Now I mentioned this earlier in the video, if you do not have this set up on your furnace, I highly, highly recommend this. This is a five to $10 um, job. It can take about 10 to 20 minutes. And this will allow you to unplug your furnace in the event of an emergency. And you can then plug it into a power station like this one and keep your house warm in the event of an emergency. If you're interested in that video, check it out right here. And until next time, you guys be safe. Later.